Hello viewers, welcome to Elimu TV, which is your station where you watch and experience. I'm your tutor, Mr. Mwangi Francis, and I'm taking you through chemistry form 2. And in this lesson, we are going to look at the following objectives. So pay attention and follow through the lesson. So the goals of this lesson are, number one, we are going to look at what is uh, an ion. So we are going to define an ion. We are also going to explain ion formation. We will also look at the different types of ions which are formed. And uh, we, this will help us also to be able to distinguish uh, maybe a cation and an ion, basically metal and non-metal. So why do chemical reactions occur? Chemical reactions occur uh, in, order to, uh, in order for atoms to attain a state of chemical balance. So when is an atom said to be chemically stable? An atom is said to be chemically stable if the outermost energy level of the atom has the maximum number of electrons that it can hold. So what are the maximum number of electrons that an atom can hold in the outermost energy level? One, we have two electrons in the outermost energy level and this gives us a state which we refer to as duplet state of stability. And if an atom has eight electrons in the outermost energy level, this gives us an octet state of stability. And this is for the first 20 elements. The first uh, energy level can only hold a maximum of two. And the second, third, and fourth energy levels can hold a maximum of eight. So if the outermost energy level electron has the number that it should have maximum rate, then that uh, atom is chemically stable. So for instance, we have neon, uh, and we also have helium and these atoms are said to be chemically stable. Why? Look at neon atomic number 10. Therefore electronic configuration is 2-8 electronic arrangement. That is the first energy level with two electrons and the second energy level has got eight electrons. Therefore this atom is electrically, uh, is chemically stable so it cannot take part in a reaction under normal conditions. That's why it is said to be an inert gas. The same case applies to helium, atomic number two. It has got two electrons in the outermost energy level, which happens to be the second, uh, the first energy level, sorry. And therefore, it is inert, it is stable, it does not take part in a chemical reaction under normal conditions. We also have other atoms, for instance, sodium. Electronic arrangement uh, can be derived from its atomic number. It has 11 protons and 11 electrons. So from that, we get the electronic arrangement or configuration to be 281. That is two electrons in the first energy level, eight electrons in the second energy level, and one electron in the outermost energy level. So for it to become stable, it loses one electron or gains seven electrons. Remember either way, the outermost energy level will have the maximum number of electrons. But in this case, losing one electron requires less energy than the energy required in gaining seven electrons. And therefore it loses one electron, giving us an atom which now acquires charge after losing an electron. Where does this charge come from? Look at the electronic arrangement. We have 2,8. That is, we have not altered the nucleus, which has still 11 protons, which are positively charged, but we have less electrons than previously. Initially, we had said an atom is electrically neutral because the number of protons and electrons are the same. But in this case, the number of protons are more than the number of electrons by one. And therefore, it gives us a charge which we should illustrate as shown. So put the parenthesis and indicate the charge uh, there to show that now this atom is charged. A charged atom is what we refer to as an ion. And that's how atoms form ions. For instance, sodium. We look at other ways. We also have uh, chlorine. A uh, chlorine atom has got electronic configuration of 287. It's atomic number 17. Therefore, two electrons in the first energy level, 
8 electrons in the second energy level and 7 electrons in the outermost energy level. So what does it do? It gains 1 electron. Uh, the energy that is required in gaining 1 electron is uh, much less compared to when a chlorine atom loses the 7 electrons either way by trying to achieve stability. So in this case, it acquires an electron in the outermost energy level and therefore it forms an ion. The ion formed has got an electronic configuration of 288. The outermost energy level has got the maximum number of electrons that it can hold. Therefore, it is an ion. We show that it is an ion by putting the parentheses as indicated and adding our just or showing the charge also uh, uh, where we have it on those parentheses. And now this indicates that this is an ion of a non-metal which is negatively charged as a result of gaining an, ere an electron. So when atoms gain electrons, for instance, or lose electrons, magnesium loses two electrons to give us an electronic configuration of 2,8, aluminium gain, uh, loses three, uh, calcium loses two, uh, potassium loses one, and they give us uh, charged ions, uh, that is charged atoms, and they acquire a new state. Look at uh, fluorine. Uh, gains one, chlorine gains one, oxygen gains two electrons, uh, sulfur gains uh, two electrons. All of them, they have achieved stability by gaining electron. It can gain one electron, two or three. Look at the metals on this other side. They can lose two, three or, uh, or one number of electrons to acquire uh, a new state. The new state is what we refer to as oxidation state. And the number of electrons an atom gains or loses to become stable is what we refer to as valency. Or it can simply be defined as the combining power of an element. So this is the state. What is oxidation state? Uh, it is a state that an atom acquires a new state which is referred to as oxidation state. Types of ions that have been formed. Ions formed are either positively or negatively. Positively charged ions are referred to as cation, while negatively charged ions are referred to as an ion. Atoms that form ions by losing electrons become positively charged, while those that gain become negatively charged. Very good. So metals form ions by losing electron, while non-metals form ions by gaining electrons. That's a very important point to consider, which will help us to identify a metal and a non-metal. So did we get uh, to understand uh, the goals of this lesson. Let's try to answer the following question. What is an ion? Can we differentiate between an ion and a cation? And please describe how the following atoms form their ions. Magnesium, oxygen, and carbon. You can refer uh, this statement or you can as well as refer to uh, this concept in secondary students, uh, secondary chemistry students book 2 or Patel but most importantly, do send us an SMS or visit our Facebook and YouTube page at Erimu TV or give us a tweet at Erimu TV underscore KE. Once again, your tutor, Mr. Mongi Francis, do stay tuned at Erimu TV and experience much more.